You're listening to Soap Dirt, the latest in television entertainment news. Hey, YNR fans, Belinda from Soap Dirt here, and we've got some sizzling spoilers for next week, March 25th through 29th. We've got spoilers for Tucker and Audra, uh, spoilers on the fate of one of the two big cheaters, and spoilers about a disgruntled employee sassing off at his boss. Of course, we will have, as always, a full roster of weekly spoilers later this week, but for now, check these out and be sure to stick around until the very end, where I'm going to show you the hot new promo for Young and the Restless next week and definitely click subscribe if you haven't yet. So one spoiler I'm particularly excited about is the interaction between Lily Winters and Heather Stevens there at Crimson Lights. It has been more than a week since Lily came home from her trip to California and found Daniel Romilotti all cozy with his ex and their daughter playing family, which again, putting your family together is fine. But you break up with your girlfriend first. Otherwise, you're just a cheater setting a bad example for your teenage daughter. Lily didn't even play for a minute after she came in. She quickly figured out that the vibes were off and she forced a confession of Daniel's cheating. What was insanely insensitive to me, but also typical of how some guys behave was Daniel tried to shift the blame onto Lily right off the bat saying you were gone too long. Uh, No dummy. She was gone the amount of time she needed to be gone to take care of her daughter. Get a shave and a haircut and update your resume because Lily needs to throw you out the door of Chancellor winners. And it looks like next week we finally find out what revenge she exacts on those cheaters. So We have this scene at Crimson Lights with Lily and Heather. They are very intent at a table. They're bickering. They're in that back room, you know, that has the side door off to the little patio. And it looks like Miss Winters is done. The gloves are off. Lily says, you made your choice. Now I'll make mine. And Heather's jaw drops. And she says, I assume that means you're going to fire me. And of course, Lily could break the news to her right there, yes or no, but no, she's going to torment her, and I am so there for it. Lily says, uh, I don't know, Heather, I haven't decided yet, and then she smirks and walks away from the table, very smug, and almost runs into Daniel, who is just walking in the main door of Crimson Lights. Lily gives him a look. I don't think that's going to bode well for him either. I imagine both Heather and Daniel should be a little worried about their fates at Chancellor Winners. And while the thing they did was personal and their jobs are part of Lily's professional life, I don't see how Lily is going to want to look at them at work after this. And plus, I am all about supporting and I'm willing to start a petition if it'll make it happen to have just a Romilotti mass exodus out of Genoa City. We can take Danny. We can take Daniel. We can take Cricket. We can take Heather. Lucy can trot right behind them. They can all go. Phyllis can follow and keep stalking them until she decides she's done. And then she can come back maybe with her head on straight or I don't know, you know, having thrown Danny out of a car somewhere. That's fine. It's all fine with me. All right. The second scene of the promo, the coffee shop set gets a hefty workout the week of March 25th because there's another scene there. Definitely stick around to the end of the video to see this one. This one has me really excited too. So as a reminder, last week, Audra told Tucker McKyle she's through with him because he keeps thinking about Ashley Abbott, even though he doesn't want to get back with her romantically. He can't, you know, he's worried and rightly so. And then he delayed their trip to Paris. He had a good business reason, but she was really looking forward to their getaway. Audra had that little temper fit the other day while she was packing and started throwing her stuff around, threw him out of the room. And then there was the whole thing with Ashley kissing him and he had to just like force her off of him. And all of this annoys Audra. To Tucker's credit, I will say, I think he's been very honest with Audra lately about all of this. He insists that he loves her, doesn't want Ashley, but she doesn't seem to believe him or she's just over it. So that's the whole vibe with these two as we head into the coffee shop for this next scene, also in the back room of Crimson Lights. So Tucker and Audra are bickering, debating, low-key arguing, and he reaches out and grabs her arm. 
And that's when Nate Hastings walks in the side door and sees their altercation. Tucker's trying to get her to listen, but he, and he is speaking to her as he grabs her arm. He says, hey, then there's some kind of mumbly stuff that's hard to hear. And Audra is like pulling back saying, just don't touch me. And she yanks her arm out of Tucker's grasp, but he's kind of stepping closer. Looks like he might touch her again, wants to continue the convo, but Nate is not having it. And Nate says, you heard the lady. So Tucker lets go of her arm. He rolls his eyes, takes a step back, like, you know, hands off. Clearly, Tucker is a lover and not a fighter. And Nate used to be a surgeon, not a fighter. But after Devon messed up his career, assaulting him and jacking up his hand, Nate is free to punch Tucker in the face without it affecting future surgical work. So maybe Tucker should take two more steps back because Nate is all hot and heavy playing hero and... I'm, I'm excited about it. I like Nate. He's, he's so hot. But I like Tucker, too. So we'll see. And I know you, you guys are torn over both of them. Everybody's got their faves. So, all right. The third and final scene of the promo that I'm about to show you is not at the coffee shop. Imagine that. It's over at the Abbott Mansion. And it's a showdown over working together at Jabot. But it sounds more like working against each other at Jabot. It's a mother-son argument. And it's not pretty. In case you forgot, because we haven't seen this storyline in weeks, like maybe even more than a month. I don't even know, weeks. I'm stretching my brain to think the last time. So, of course, you know, Diane is the co-CEO sitting alongside her husband, Jack Abbott, at the helm of Jabot. That bothers Phyllis, of course, who snarked about it. But the person it's eating at most is their son, Kyle Abbott, who thinks the co-CEO job should be his. Remember, Billy Abbott left that job to go work at CW at his mom, Jill Abbott's request. And then Jack decided Kyle should be COO, chief operating officer, and Diane should be co-chief executive officer sitting beside her hubby. So since then, we saw a little bit of angst on Kyle's part of the office, but he was kind of trying to fight his jealousy and he was owning it. Now, though, it seems like he's getting bratty, entitled, and too big for his britches again next week. So you're going to see Diane Jenkins basically, basically wagging her finger at her son, Kyle Abbott, at the mansion. And she says, you seem to forget that I'm your superior. You're supposed to report to me, not the other way around. And Kyle gets snarky and sarcastic and says, well, forgive me if I overstepped. And then he just looks tight jawed and annoyed and walks away. So it looks like the gloves may be off. You know, Diane's not tiptoeing around her son anymore. She's got the ring on her finger, seat at the table, forgiveness from the family, So she's got no reason to be anything other than who she wants to be and what she wants to be. And what's nuts, you know, Diane advocated for Jack to give Kyle that job, but Jack didn't want him to have it. He basically wanted, said he wanted Kyle to work his way up and he's not even working his way from the mailroom. He's still working his way from a top executive job. So Kyle's just being such a tool, in my opinion. I, and I, I just think Kyle's barking up the wrong tree. His mother loves him, but I don't think she's going to take a lot of BS from him. He actually doesn't entirely know who he's playing with, I suspect. So we'll see how it goes. One more moment, and I'm going to show you the promo for next week, but please subscribe if you haven't. Drop your comments on what you are excited to see and come back soon. Of course, we are the number one soap opera site. More followers on YouTube than anybody else. So come back soon. We're here talking YNR, B&B, and more seven days a week. Now buckle up. This is Belinda, and here's that promo. You made your choice. I will make mine. I assume that means you're going to fire me. Uh, I don't know, Heather. I haven't decided yet. Just don't touch me. You heard the lady. You seem to forget that I'm your superior. You're supposed to report to me, not the other way around. Well, forgive me if I overstepped. 